This time on Captain Castle's Laboratory, we're going to be working on a springtime musical carousel that's supposed to play the tune Can't Help Falling in Love. And that's all it says on the box. Here's the box. Um, just has an item code and stuff. No manufacturer. And it's the same thing in all four sides. Well, it also says it's an ornamental piece, not a toy. So, anyway, I knew it was, uh, one of these was broke, but, um, the whole thing is how I pulled out of the box. So I got some brass rings. These poles, I noticed, uh, spin separate. So I wonder if they're supposed to twist in here. Um, this turns, but I don't think that's right. It doesn't sound good on the inside. But, of course, that's why it's here. It doesn't work. So we're going to see if we can put this thing back together. <clears throat> um, so on the bottom, you see we got a couple of screws. It probably holds the mechanism in. And then these appear to be glued on because there's nothing inside. They're just solid plastic. So nothing. But I see some glue in here and around here and there and there. So this balsa wood comes off. Uh, this sticker says Made in China. Winding it doesn't do anything. So let's uh, fire up the heat. Fire up an additional light. And see if we can remove this balsa bottom. See if we can fix this. It almost feels ceramic, but I believe it's just a hard resin, because this chip piece is hard resin. So I'm sure it's just a hard resin piece. I'm not worried about the wood so much. The resin and the glue might have a very similar melting point. So... Just gonna... What's nice about this is um, if you break this wood, let's say, it's a piece of balsa wood, it's very thin, you can get it from any craft store, draw the shape, cut it out, and put it back in. So if you end up breaking it, it can be replaced. Unless you need some black spray paint to make it black again. Heck, you can even go into a hobby store and go into the expensive section where they have the wood for um, like the Cricut and the Cameo machines and buy that. And you can put it in your Cricut or Cameo and have it cut out the shape. That's too much work. I'd rather just trace the broken piece onto uh, another piece of balsa wood and just use a pair of sharp scissors or a, a coping saw. Or if you have a sander, you can sand it down too, like a drum or a barrel sander. Belt sander. All right, let's see if we got enough heat applied to start the separation. I got enough heat applied to uh, make it start playing music. Not what I was going for, but uh, it's a positive, I guess. So the mechanism works as far as the musical part. Uh, it might just be bound up. There's all sorts of stuff right here on the spinny part. Um, the key or whatever you want to call it. Well, this glue doesn't want to separate very well. Temperature. Like that. Mm, smell like burning wood.
this wood might break because it's not really separating the glue. The glue isn't getting as hot as the resin. The resin's starting to flex. And the wood is, uh, well, it's sticking to the uh, glue really well. And I don't want to distort the resin. I just need one piece to start lifting. None of it wants to come up. Oh, wait. Can I get under? Yeah, there we go. All right. So using the uh, hooked part, I was able to find a spot that I could lift and get that up. Now I can try and walk around um, as I get this hot. Ooh, this thing is nice and toasty. I think we're starting to get it. Hmm. Don't touch the metal. <clears throat> mm, that might leave a mark. I might end up unscrewing the three screws because I'm wondering if the mechanism being attached with the horse isn't going to pop out. So I'm going to try and flex it a little bit more and if it doesn't seem like it's going to separate then I'll take the three screws out. I almost got all the glue broke free. There's all the glue. got a couple of screws and washers which I'm assuming screw in right there so these don't actually rotate the machine should turn off in a second it's cooling down If you have a station or you're thinking about getting one, the heat gun will run until it cools down to below 100 degrees C, which is 212 Fahrenheit, before it turns off so that the coils don't um, snap. There's that. Now, can I unscrew this? Yes. So we got buildup right here. I don't know if you can see it, it's really hard, but where the wood was drilled out and it was drilled out horribly. So here's the mechanism. And I don't know why it's not turning or moving the horse. Looks like the horse should be going up and down. Um, see some of the balsa wood stayed. So there's a mechanism right here. It's a wheel with an eccentric, and the eccentric moves, and I have no idea how it's supposed to move this horse in any fashion. I don't see anything really attached to it. 
Oh, there's a small little notch in this piece of brass right here. So either it's broke or it's bound up. There's a jam nut. I'm going to loosen the jam nut and see if that allows me to maybe disassemble some of this. So I can take a look at it without having the resin base and the horse attached. Alright, so the jam nut's off. Still no luck. Alright, if I spin the bottom pole, I get the horse out. And there's the jam nut. So here's the mechanism. If you look, you'll see that bar with the pin. There's another pin that goes into the shaft, and when this turns, this is supposed to move, and it's not. Appears to be one screw. Now let's get that key back on and rewind this. Looks like the center shaft isn't turning. So this moves freely. Here's the bar that pushes that up and down. So if I move this eccentric, you can see how the bar goes in and out. So the problem is where it comes into contact with the drum right here. And the drum is the musical part. Supposed to do that. Not that fast, of course, but you get the point. All right, it's now working. It's not going to work for long. I think the plastic insert inside here is broken. This is all pressed together, so it's not like you can take it apart easily. Plus, if you do it wrong, the uh, squirrel or 
tightly wound spring in here, it will go poof and shoot out. But it is going up and down. There might be another fix for this. First, I'm going to see if I can get this thing to pop back out. Apparently, it actually locked in. Okay. It's going to need some lubrication. Ugh. I'm going to use some non-stick dry film. I don't want this thing building up dust or hair or anything in here. So what I would suggest, if yours is pressed into the plastic gear and it doesn't stay in, um, put a dab of glue on the teeth of the gear and shove it in. When I mean glue, I'm talking like a uh, resin-based glue or super glue, uh, and then let it sit for a minute. Uh, because what happens is, is this gear is attached to this drum. You can't replace this gear. This gear is the drum. You could probably try and match this part number on the bottom and maybe get a, a replacement innard, but I doubt it, especially due to its possible age. I don't know if you can see that part number, but I'll read it just in case. It says, oh, it's a patent. It says U.S. Patent 4458573, made in Japan. The top says Sankyo, S-A-N-K-Y-O, Japan. We know the tune because it says it on the box. So, and there's no other descriptive marks on here. All right, she's bound up. Let's see where are we caught. I'm going to spray this outside of that. Whew. So I sprayed it on the wheel, the pivot points, and then down in the shaft. So hopefully it'll slide better. Try and put a little bit on these gears and try not to get it too far into the mechanism here. Actually on call today. I'm helping somebody with their family, so make sure it wasn't them. Anyhow, so what I'm do is to ensure it stays locked into the teeth, since I think the gear internally is cracked, and there's nothing I can do about that. Is I'm just going to put a little bit on the teeth. I'm going to press it back in and then I'm going to put the screw in to hold it in alignment. So There we go. 
crest and screw. The um, key keeps rubbing the ground. Looking in here, I can see a lot of um, lubrication on the gear. I'm sorry the spring in this hole. I sprayed a little bit on these gears here and those gears there, which that's not open to here, the opening's right there. So, but the shaft is going up and down. Oops. Uh, if you work on a music box center, the spinning centrifugal weight, if you touch it or hit it, it slows it down or stops it. Then, of course, the key rotates with it, so if you put this down, it's trying to turn the key, which is sitting on, so. But that's gone up and down one complete revolution. It's on its way back up again. So I think we got this one fixed. It had unseated, probably because the gear, this black one right here attached to the barrel, is probably cracked. So a little bit of super glue on the teeth. We'll hold it into the remaining non-cracked part for now. Um, eventually this will just fail completely and it'll be the end. Um, not everything's repairable, unfortunately. Most things are, but it is working. But it's working with no weight. So, let's put some weight, because this thing is actually pretty hefty, I'm surprised. Let's put some weight on it. It's actually working. It's going up. Try and hold it at a slight angle, because at an angle it'll bind if I go too steep, but you might be able to see the silver is going back in. See? Alrighty. Yay. Let's put the jam nut on. The jam nut's what holds this brass piece in place and allows it to uh, stay solid for the horse. Let's make sure we have it on square. piece of the lattice missing. It's running slower because again it's on the key. This actually might be relatively repairable. It's gonna have a small piece missing right here but it's gonna be negligible. Just need to remove, this is actually glued on all already, but I gotta remove some of this hard glue. We might be able to restore this to like 90 some odd percent. Now the bottom I'm going to hot glue on, these will be uh, glued with the Gorilla glue that the hard stuff, not the expanding stuff. Because that stuff, once it's on, it's it's almost permanent forever and ever and ever. Yeah, that should be good. Let's remove the remnants of glue on this. I don't know if it was re-glued or if it's the factory glue. It's yellowed, so I'm gonna say it's probably the original glue because it's the same color as that. Oh, maybe it's not missing anything. It looks like there's a piece missing here. It's missing on this side too, so it's just where the lattice wasn't completed. That's fine. <sighs> the foam that it comes in is so old, it's disintegrating into BBs. So, yeah, what are you gonna do about it? All right, let's get this thing back together again. Uh, all right, I don't know why 
matters three of these. But I'm assuming, based on the notch, that goes first. And then this comes from the bottom. Now, if you're afraid of this coming off, and but you want to make sure you can take it off in the future, you can put a drop of Elmer's glue on it, uh, and it'll hold it, but it won't. It'll, but it'll allow you to take it back apart. If you don't want to take it back apart, lock tight. But if you want it to be hard but still potentially removable, where you have to use a little effort, uh, put a dobble, uh, dobble, dobble, jeez, a dob of super glue. Super glue gets brittle. So that means you can actually crack it where you put a lot of force on it and it'll literally crack the glue. Ah, apparently by screwing the one, it unscrewed the other. It's actually kind of neat that it's completely dis and reassemblable. And that would be this other ring because this one has it and this one don't. So this has come off at one point. That. And then that will go here. It's like a big erector set with fragile, non made pieces. I don't want to glue the ring on it, I just want to put a dab on the threads. Dibba dabble do ya. It's going to be slightly more difficult because it's got all the weight on it. But it's nice that these poles spin freely of everything. Like that. Make sure that one, oh, that one's coming off too, so we'll tighten that. I don't want to glue the balls on because. Uh, in case it ever needs to come off, you can take this whole top piece off as one solid piece. And it's not quite in the right spot, so when I glue it, I'm going to actually tape it and let it sit for 24 hours so it holds it. You see that? <sighs> Screwing the top on here, it's also loose. That would be why the pole spun separately from the horse, is because it was loose. It's easier to spin this than the horse. I should just loosen the pole, but we're going to... Hole. Get all the crap out of it. I'm gonna get the hot glue going and we're gonna glue the bottom on. And I'm gonna get some tape and stuff prepped real quick so we can glue and tape this. So I will be back in just a second. There we go. Uh, with this ready to go before I tape it because once it's taped, you're not gonna see it. But we'll show it to you and I'll show you how I tape it and glue it and we'll be good. Be back in just a moment. All right, I am back. I'm sorry about that abrupt stop there. So, it's hot glued on the bottom. It doesn't like to be tipped sideways. As you can see, it's going up and down. It's not fast. 
but it is working. So um, when I do it this way, it's quicker because it's designed to be this way to begin with. Uh, anyhow, this is the glue I use, clear Gorilla Glue. This stuff cures super hard. I don't know if you can see the horse moving or not over this, but it's going up and down like she's supposed to. So, what we do, we're going to put the dollop in there. Like that. And then because it separates apart, The horse is still trying to go up and down. You can see it slowly moving through the tape. <laughs> but all I care about is this. This will stop playing once it's done unwinding itself. Um, you can use a bar clamp, small one. You can use a uh, string. I use blue tape because it doesn't stick. Um, leave a residue. If you used uh, gorilla, uh, gorilla tape, if you use duct tape or something, it would leave a residue, and then you have to clean the residue off. So, this is now pinched. It has to sit for about 24 hours. It has a really long cure time. Stop the mechanism, or try to. Nope, I'm just unscrewing it. But hot glued in, and that hole's cleaned off, so that now doesn't bind. I'm not going to like this song anymore after listening to this. But, anyhow, so that's how we fix this piece. Take it apart, put the screws back in, um, dab of glue on each of the poles, so that way they don't fall off inside. Uh, unbind the mechanism, little dry lube to uh, make it spin again. And then uh, a dab, will, a dab of uh, super glue on the shaft to bond it back to the gear. So that way it goes up and down. And then some Gorilla Glue to fix the arch. So that way it'll cure. It's just slow. Super Glue would work too, but you have to hold it. <clears throat> but because Super Glue, it doesn't, it, it, Super Glue is super, it bonds hard. But it's just not as hard when it's under tension. This is gonna be under tension when I cut this tape off in a day and the Super Glue will eventually crack and pop out. That other glue is like that hard resin glue. It usually requires heat. To get it to separate. So unless this is near an oven or in direct sunlight on the other side of a magnifier, that shouldn't come back apart. That side might, but that side should be fine. So that pretty much concludes the springtime musical carousel from China with no other name than that with the tune Can't Help Balling in Love, which if you watch this whole video, you might be sick of the song too. At least the same chorus verse over and over and over and over again. But that's how you fix this music box. If it's uh, broken, damaged, or falling apart, if it rattles and you're like, oh my God, something's wrong, it probably lost the screws. You can use Loctite. You can even put hot glue on the threads. You just need something to increase the friction coefficient. Um, you could wrap the threads in Teflon tape. You just need something to produce more friction. I like using glue because it's not as permanent as Loctite and not as temporary as other stuff. You can also use clear nail polish or colored nail polish if you want, and it'll do the same thing. Um, I used to use clear nail polish, and I still do, just not on these pieces, for a lot of stuff. Um, you can use colored nail polish. It's not as good. The clear nail polish has a much stronger bond on threads, especially when it's metal on metal. Um, I've been using it for a long time on many different uh, projects and stuff that require a Loctite that isn't permanent. It's cheaper than uh, removable or breakable Loctite. So 
And that's another option too, is clear nail polish. So I just can't get to it at the moment. But anyhow, so that concludes it. Till the next one.